How's it going, fellow Vanguards? It is for Carfight Calgary, and welcome to the long awaited and frequently requested deck profile of Night Rose. Now, Night Rose is a deck that has been doing very well in the current meta, and I honestly have been waiting for several reasons, including to, you know, get the Fires Collection stuff because the deck changes kind of significantly. And not only that, I was still trying to figure out how the deck worked, how it played, and came to ultimate conclusions, which I will discuss in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So, uh, our starter is uh, Undead Departed, or Undying Departed Grenache. <clears throat> he is the typical, um, on Hall or when it's retired by Hollow, Counter Charge 2, one of the best cards in Grand Blue. Helps you get your resources, and you want to start him off as your Forerunner, because when you use him as your Forerunner in Night Rose, you actually get the opportunity to use him as an attacker. So usually you have him boosted by another unit in order for you to kind of force your opponent to thinking about giving you damage or not. <clears throat> More often than not, they're not going to attack the Grenache because they're just helping you do a lot of the work in order to uh, get Grenache to the drop zone. So we have him as a starter. There are only very few cases where you actually keep him in soul, and that's against Gear Chronicle, um, with the assumption that they have some way of uh, returning to the deck. More often than not, if you're playing against Crowfang, keep him in soul. Jet, you might kind of have to like be brave and keep if you want to pull them out because they may or may not be playing Calibum. Depends on the build. Most often than not against the Gear Cardinal matchup you keep them in soul. And I don't need to explain Grenache any further. Let's continue on. Alright, onto the trigger lineup. We play four crits of Rough Sea Spanchi and four crits of Rampage Shade. Um, we play 8 crits in total, and of course, they're pretty standard for Night Rose, Soul Charge, Draw Card, and Night Rose Crit. Move to Soul on Battle, plus 5k, and Draw Card. So nothing much to say there. Uh, pretty self-explanatory and why they're pretty good. And then we play 4 Mick the Ghosty. Now, when Mick the Ghosty goes to 1, I honestly have no idea how I'm going to update Night Rose, because Night Rose actually hurts so much because they lose out on Mick more so than 7 Cs proper. Um, but I'll get to that when we get to that video. So, uh, Mick the Ghosty, uh, you guys don't know, he, when he's superior called, or when he's called in the drop zone, uh, you may hollow him, and if he's hollow, give him something 10k, and if he's retired by anything, um, he gets to go back to the deck, which is pretty nice, and very, very, very good. Um, the reason why uh, Mick is probably going to 1 is most likely because of the GB8. Um, there's the don't know what the GBA does. I'll get to that later in the video and uh, Also the fact that it helps Night Rose compress and helps Night Rose um, Pull off ridiculous amounts of power combos and defensive combos Which is something that you don't really want to you know deal with and Night Rose has to get hit Unfortunately, it's only fair and before I was a bit butthurt about the fact he's going to win But now I honestly don't care. I think it's a natural progression. And it's totally fine if we only have one Mick you just gotta play around it, so stop being so butthurt. And the last, we play four copies of Bernard the Ghosty. Now, Bernard the Ghosty is one of my favorite card arts. He's one of my favorite units, and his skill is actually really, really helpful. Um, for those who don't know, he's from the Fires Collection. His ability is, uh, you may discard a grade one or less card from your hand, and if you pay the, use him to pay for the cost of a specific G-Guard, which is Diabolist of Solitation, Solitation? Negromona? Can't read that from here. Um, you get to draw a card. So he helps you drop draw, puts your mix at the drop zone, puts whatever you need in the drop zone. Very nice. Unfortunately, you can't mill anything, but that's why we play at Gleam, which I will get to later. And for the last grade zero, we play the one copy of Chappy the Ghosty. Now, Chappy the Ghosty is in here to help facilitate your mills, get your setup a lot faster so you don't have to go into Obadiah. Um, also, it has such a really interesting interaction with Negromona. It's very awesome, and I think I burped in the camera. It gross. But um, he's, for, for those who don't know what Chappie does, basically when he's moved to the Guardian Circle by any means, you get to look through your deck and put one card, up to one card, from your deck into the drop zone. You can choose not to send anything. It's very nice, the fact that Chappie lets you look through the deck and gives you a free shuffle, which is very useful for later in the game, so you can filter out your non-triggers, so you can filter out whatever you need early game. It's, overall, Chappie's a good card, and... Yeah, uh, I honestly forced myself to play it after re realizing what he, his interaction was with Negromona. So, Chappie's very good. I'm really glad you get to see play with him. 
on to the grade ones. So we play four um, flipping PGs. Now, uh, I play these because having the counter charge engine is actually much more useful than a reoccurring PG, which is unfortunate because I do like the prospect, the, the theory, the idea, the concept behind the reoccurring PGs, like uh, Drake Saver Estras, like the, the domination one. Um, Seawall Banshee unfortunately requires too much resource spent in order to gain that PG. Uh, essentially, most often you're going to be soul blasting two and maybe or maybe not counter blasting one to get back the Seawall Banshee. Now, there are times where it does work out. For example, if you bring out Seawall Banshee using Renash or you bring out Seawall Banshee using Negro Songer, I mean, I get it that it works like that. But the thing is, is that it's there are better cards to call out using those skills. And it's kind of unfortunate because... Um, Seawall Banshee has is pretty great in terms of being able to recur thing recur itself from the drop zone, and plus and the, with Night Rose in general, you want your counter blasts. So yeah, you got to be playing uh, Water Spell Jin, or else you're probably in for a bad time. Uh, next, we play four Strength Fodders, two four Tommy the Ghosties, both of each art one SP. This is nice. Uh, Strike Fodder, you want to strike this deck? Uh, yeah, not much to set. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we play three copies of uh, Witch Doctor of Powdered Bone Negro Bone. He is your main attack engine. He is the one of the main reasons why you get so many attacks in uh, Grand Blue, or spe specifically Night Rose. Uh, at the end of the battle, that this guy boosted. You may Carbust one for the cost, and then retire the unit that this was boosting and Superior Call a unit with Hollow. Now it's very hard to interrupt the Negro Bone. The only way to get rid of it is either uh, is during the battle phase. So at the end of the battle, um, as long even if he's retired, let's say like a Belog or something, his uh, skill will resolve. So <clears throat> you gotta make sure that if you're gonna get rid of him, get rid of him before the battle or during the battle, not after the battle. Uh, he's very key important, and he also. Um, if you know how to, if you can target retire, you can also mess up Nairos's, uh Generation Break Two skills by retiring this guy before battle, and then your opponent basically is screwed out of uh, defensive re uh, revival with GB Two. Uh, it's something to keep in mind um, because typically these stay on the board more often than not. So there we go. <clears throat> now for the rest of the great ones, there are four one ofs. The first one is Fatal Shade. Uh, Fatal Shade skill. As she has the hollow ability and soul lost one, put it to the bottom of your deck. When she's retired due to the effect of hollow, you may superior call a non grade one from your drop zone to your rear. So, this is pretty useful. Um, she helps you uh, get a card back without having to use Night Rose's uh, GB2, which is very useful. Um, most of the time, you're either calling out a Grenache or a uh, Negro Lazy. Depends on the scenario, but more often than not, um, Fatal Shade, when she, you do use her, she helps you out, saving you three cards from the deck, preventing that uh, unfortunate deck out, which is very nice. And, you know, you want to use your GB2 either to get all four counter blasts back, or to set up the turn for uh, Negro Lazy, or to get to just a free refresh of four um, counter blasts. So, uh, fail shade of one is fine. Uh, you only need the one, and you can mill it out with Chappie. So there you go. Next, we play one copy of Bail the Ghosty. Now, Bail the Ghosty, um, if he's when he's superior call from the drop zone, he gets plus two K. So if you resurrect him, he's a nine K attacker, which is nice. And if he's retired during the either battle phase, if you have a Night Rose Vanguard, you may move him to the bottom of your deck, and you kind of charge one. So he he's useful along with uh, Negro Bone here because you can have this setup and Negro Bone's essentially free. Or you can just use him for the G-Guardian to make your G-Guardian free. It's very useful. In fact, it's a ghosty. Um, I only play one. And there you go. Uh, next, we play one Twitter run for the one rush matchup. Uh, Twitter run is basically the main deck version of Sabriz. Um, if you don't know what he does. So, his skills act rest. Uh, if you have a great Vanguard and your opponent has not ridden up. And there's no face of cards in your G-Zone. You may put this to your G-Zone. And then if your opponent rides a grade 3, this goes to your drop zone. And it's a Cray Elemental, so it belongs to all clans and nations. So there you go. Uh, you play the one for the one rush matchup, of course, just to help play safe. Stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory why you would play Toy Run. Um, it kind of helps. You don't have to play it, of course. It's just a personal tech if you're, that, if you're worried of 
the one rush matchup, and I kind of am in this deck, so there's that. And the last one, we play one copy of Light Elemental Honolly. Now, Honolly is one of the best cards in the upcoming format because looking to the current, the upcoming format, a lot of decks are going to be playing multiple attacking decks that expend a lot of counter blasts. For example, Hellheart Eight, uh, Fender, White uh, Genesis in general, the Night Rose matchup. Uh, Gear Chronicle, stuff like that. Uh, Honolly, for those of you who don't know, um, all rear guards, so both you and your opponents, cannot attack on the fifth or more turn unless you counter lost one. And then has other skills when he's placed, flip a face up, card face down in your damage zone. So if you have zero counter blast, you can still call him out. But what, the great thing about Honolly is that it hurts decks that have to require. They require multiple attacks, and yet these skills require counter blast. Again, like I mentioned, Hell Heart 8, Night Rose, etc. So uh, having um, Harnley in the deck is very, very, very nice. And with how Grand Blue works, you can easily abuse the skill of Harnley. The um, other than like that's pretty it's like it's pretty good. Uh, I would recommend everyone shrining out Harnley because having Har the presence of Harnley on board forces your opponent to make. Bad place. You yourself are kind of limited as well, but the thing is, it's Grand Blue. It's e you can easily replace Honolly. It's not that difficult to pull off, and since it's on your side of the field, you can easily just play something over it in order for you to get your stuff and things. So there you go. <clears throat> That's the great one. Lineup. Um, yeah, move on. Let's move on. On the great twos, we play three copies of Negro Lazy. Uh, he is the one of the Great. One of the backbones of Night Rose. He helps with your defensive plays too. His skill is hollow. GB1, kind of boss 1, soul boss 1, superior call unit from your drop zone. That's not Negro Lazy. And at the end of the turn, if he's retired by the hollow ability, uh, you may counter charge 1, soul charge 1, and don't forget the plus 2k. Uh, he helps you get your field. He helps you do stuff. He's really important. Next, we play two copies of King Serpent. Uh, basic skill when he's uh, resurrected from the drop zone, you counter charge 1 and solo charge. One very important for maintaining your soul and for getting your counter charge. So very nice, and it's a free call with Negros every turn, more or less. Next, we play three copies of uh, Negro Rook. Now, I typically when I play Negro Rook, I have him at two. Uh, the reason why I put bumped it to three is because I took I do not play Maltreat Shade. So let me explain why I don't play Maltreat Shade. Um, Originally, I thought Maltreat Shade was very good, because uh, Maltreat gets plus 2k for every hull unit on your board, including itself, and at the end of the turn, if it's retired by the hull ability, you may move it to the deck, which is great, and counter charge 1, which is also great. The reason why I took on Maltreat Shade is because using Maltreat Shade forces you to build your field around having units with hollow, and even with, even though it includes itself, it's actually very hard to get the numbers you want. Um, because typically, what you want on your board is having two Negro Bones, and two and Negro Bone does not have the Hollow ability and cannot be in Hollow ever. So, um, at most, you're gonna get six K onto your um, Maltreat Shade if you have a Hollow unit behind your Vanguard and a Hollow unit attacking, um, and of course Maltreat Shade yourself. And that's only fifteen K, which is kind of an awkward number. The only time where Maltreat Shade is actually useful is if you if you combo with Negro Songer. Because it goes up. So I'd rather, instead of trading away the 1k to make it a 16 for the counter charge, I'd rather just have the 16k with uh, Negro, Negro Rook. And not only that, it stays in my drop zone, not go back to the deck, so I don't have to worry about fetching it or whatever. So that's why I play the, the Negro Rook at 3. Instead of playing, like, say, 2 of this and then cutting out one in grade 1 to play the second Maltreat Shade. So there you go. And the last of the grade twos, I play two copies of Skeleton Cannoneer, which is one of the best grade twos in Grand Blue. Uh, when he's resurrected from the drop zone, uh, you may hollow him. And uh, when he is resurrected, kind of boss one, retire a card. And if he's in hollow, you get the draw card. So the draw card is a hollow skill. So remember, you can have him on board and still kill something. You just don't draw, which is fair. All right, so that's the end of the grade two lineup. Let's finally move on to the grade threes, which are short, sweet, and simple. Uh, first great theory, of course, is our beautiful Night Rose. Um, I, I don't know if I really need to explain Night Rose. Uh, look at all the user rarities. Um, her ability is Generation Break 2. If a unit on your side of the field is retired and sent to drop zone, or is it just retired? And set into drop zone. You may mill three cards and resurrect said card. And this is a once per turn skill, so 
typically the first unit retired is the one you get to bring back. Or actually, not typically, it has to be. Unless you have like three cards signed with teams to go to the drop zone. Anyways, um, next, and her on stride ability is kind of plus one. Superior call a unit from your drop zone when you stride, then it gets plus two. So, you know, the main reason why you want to play Net Rose is her GB2 skill, very strong, very defensive, and works really well with your deck. Uh, we play one copy of Vampire Princess of Starlight Night Rose. Look at that Rummy Labyrinth Rare. Um, her ability is once per turn, Generation Break 2, Soul Blast 1, Vanguard or Rearguard. If a unit is resurrected on your side of the field, you may pay the cost. If you do, Superior Call a Grid 1 specifically behind Night Rose. And her on stride ability is um, mill up to 3 cards, I believe. It's 3. Up to three in superior call the card. If the card has the hollow ability, it gets plus 2k or is it 3k? Plus 3k. So, more often than not, you're not using Night Rose as your Vanguard, obviously, because you, you want to be on this. Uh, it is a fifth Night Rose, so at least you'll always have Night Rose Vanguard. Um, the cool thing about Night Rose as a rear guard, though, is that if um, you superior call it along with something else, you can pay another Soul Blast to call um, a, th a third unit out. So, an example would be, um, if this is already on the board, you can call out uh, Negro Lazy. Negro Lazy will call something out, and then this will call something else out. So that's pretty good. Uh, although I would be cu uh, potentially cutting Starlight, because I I don't have really good reason to use Starlight as a rear guard, let alone a vanguard. Like, it's kind of awkward to figure out the timing for her. Uh, while she is a good card, and I do have it because it is a Romeo Labyrinth Rare, I, I would consider cutting her out for a second copy of Ice Prison Hades Emperor Kokaitis Reverse. Now, Kokaitis Reverse, uh, of course, this one's an SP because it's a one of, might as well have SPs. Uh, anyways, his ability is Limit Break, uh, Act, Lock a Rear Guard, and mill three cards if you do Superior Call a unit, and that unit gets plus DK. And then he's a cross stride, which doesn't matter, and has Lord, which also doesn't matter. Uh, the reason why you're playing Kalkutis is what for the one rush matchup. Now, this card has been popping up a lot in uh, Japanese builds and builds that have been topping with Night Rose. And the reason why you're doing it is the one rush matchup. Now, 7C's one rush loses to Limit Break, and this particular Limit Break is very, very good for um, Night Rose. The reason why is because you play Chappie, you play Twitter Run. So, the, one of the main combos is you use Chappie, Mela, Twitter Run. Ride this, lock something called Twitter Run, and then your Generation Break is online. Meaning the next two you can ride into Night Rose, and then use your Necro Bone and your um, other cards, which is, you know, very, 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 very good. Uh, since most of the deck only relies on Generation Break 1, and if you don't use GP2, you're not milling, so you can deck yourself out, etc, etc. Uh, another thing is that the units that you call with uh, Kokaitis Reverse get plus 3k, so it gets a 7k body, and you... I'm assuming you're going to call a grade 2. Um, they're going to be 12Ks. And if they're 12Ks against a grade 1, that's already a 10K shield. So you could do the math. Your opponent's going to run out of hand and eventually spit her out and die if they're playing a 1 rush for, uh, deck, including 7Cs. Uh, the thing about 7Cs 1 rush is that if for in order for them to call something... From the drop zone, they have to give up a card from hand, and they also need to have counter blasts, and they also need to have specific cards in the drop zone, uh, Night Spin, or uh, uh, Night Runner, Night Crow, example. And Night Crow's going to one, so it's going to kill the deck if not anything. Uh, I mean, it's still playable, I guess, but uh, it's not going to be as potent as it was before. And the last right there, before we forget, is uh, Night Storm, uh, Mighty Rogue Night Storm. Uh, Hollow, once Catabus 1, uh, Generation Break 1, Catabus 1. At the end of the battle, this attack, if it's in the Hollow state, you may uh, Spear Call another unit that's not on the same circle as this, to a circle not that this is not on. And he has the unread ability of Catabus 1, Soul Bus 1, search for a unit with the Hollow ability, but that's almost likely never going to happen. Um, Nighting Right Storm kind of just, just sucks. <laughs> Alright, and so that's the great 3 lineup, and that's the main deck. Moving on to the strides, uh, pretty self-explanatory most of the time, but we'll, we'll, we'll go through each one. So we have uh, 
Ghosty Curate King Obadiah, of course, you gotta have him in the deck because he's a free stride nonetheless. And he helps you mill. Uh, basically, mill up to three cards from your deck if two of the cards you milled have hollow, spiritual, a normal ghosty. So, very good. Uh, right now, your only targets are Bale and Tommy, but most of the often not. Uh, they're gonna be in there. Who cares? Um, next we play two copies of Gash. Now people would argue to play two pairs. I only play one pair because uh, I like situations and deciding when the best time to use certain cards. Um, I, typically I like using uh, <clears throat> Green Ash later in the game in Night Rose because it helps you build a full board with a bunch of power. But uh, most, most of the time yeah, I, only, I, I, I use them mid late game. Uh, there's the no, can I bust one, soul bust one, flip a copy of himself, and then empty up up to five cards from your soul. For every card you remove from the soul for the second part of the skill, you may superior call a unit, so up to five. And for every face up G zone, those units get 1k, so very, very good. You gotta have them, very good. Alright, next I play two copies of Negro Sunger. Uh, Negro Diabolist of Corpse, Negro Sunger. Again, people will argue to play two pairs, I only play the one. Uh, his his ability is Carabust 1, Generation Persona, Flip, uh, Discard a card. Uh, you may check the top 4 cards of your deck, mill up to 1, shuffle, and then superior call a unit from your drop zone. And then that unit gets 5k for every face up G zone. Uh, so, you know, it can get pretty big depending on which stage of the game you're at. Uh, Negro Song is really good. He's also a very good first stride if you need it. But otherwise, um, you don't really need to worry about Negro Song or but yeah. It's, it's it's a good card. You gotta have. Them. Uh, next to play the two the copy two copies of Night Rose. Now here this is where people kind of diverge. People don't play Night Rose. People do play Night Rose. I personally play Night Rose because I like the King Serpent combo. Uh, that the original King Serpent combo from the first from the initial release of Night Rose. Now if you don't want to play Night Rose because you feel it's inferior to other things, you can cut Night Rose to either play the second pair of Grand uh, Gauche or the second pair of Negro Song. I personally like the Night Rose because Night Rose helps you do your stuff and your things. So there you go. Uh, now I can't. I don't really need to explain much else, and I'm gonna continue on from here. Uh, for those who don't know what Nightrose does, Generation Break 2, Cut Boss 2, Superior Call 2 units in different call, uh, different rows, it's front and back, and that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, that's a Generation Personal Flip, so helps you out. Moving on, we play one copy of Pirate King of Redemption, Dragut. His ability is Act, Act, Cut Boss 2, once, or, once per turn, Generation Break 2, Cut Boss 2, uh, and choose a card from your hand and discard it. Um... For every card on your field, you may superior call one unit. And uh, for every unit that is called that has the hollow ability, your opponent is forced to retire one card. And if your opponent's field is empty, you may draw a card. So the nice thing about Dragu is that it helps you control the board, potentially white pole fields. And, you know, if you call Skeleton Cannoneer, you get a plus. You know, this is very nice. Uh, he helps you for the control. He can... So he and he can blow out games uh, if your opponent's very reliant on a, on a field. So having the uh, Dragoot Dr is, of course, very good. Uh, next, we'll play one copy of Pirate King of the Abyss, Blue Heart, because Blue Heart is a very good free stride. Um, I was tinkering around with this one slot because I did have the one free slot. Uh, I was thinking either playing uh, Bandit Rum or that Dragon thing. The dragon thing is actually pretty nice, all things considered, because with my luck, I typically get both the power and the revive. Um, but having blue heart is just more tactical in a way. For example, if you have Honolly, you can get rid of Honolly. There's that. Or if you have a King Serpent, you can replace the King Serpent. Or something like, I don't know, if there's a mech on board, whatever. Uh, he's just a very good card. He's, he's basically like... Uh, uh, Night Mist, and the fact that he recalls two cards as long as you have a field. So, <clears throat> he's pretty good. I would recommend playing it. Up to you what you play for this slot. Because the next slot we're playing is the Generation Break 8. Uh, Unfading Ship Immortal Galeon. And this card's Generation Break 8 ability is so, so freaking strong. Uh, when you place them in the Vanguard Circle, uh, Generation Break 8, Pick five cards in your drop zone, call them to separate rear guards, and they get one 10k until the end of the turn. And then, at the end of the turn, they all die. So, it doesn't matter if they die or not, because either your opponent's dying or very crippled. Um, yeah, the ship is very good. 
I don't think I need else to explain because the skill is so strong and so simple. Yeah. That's... Yeah. <laughs> um, typically what you want your board to look like, uh, there's there's a reason why it makes going to... Uh, what, what, to one? Or to, to one, because you can call out three mixes boosters and then have, like, say, a... Uh, Night Storm and then the Negro Lazy or, or like or like a Negro Rook or something. Then you go Negro Rook, unboost attack Vanguard, poten uh, potentially hit a stand, attack with this again if you hit this fourth stand miraculously. Uh, attack and boost with, uh, no, attack with Night Storm and the battle call Negro Lazy, call out Rook and then attack, attack. So uh, there's a reason why um, Nick was gonna go to one. That's typically the combo play, and if you have more counter blasts, you can instead of calling uh, out mix, you can call out uh, Negro Bones stuff like that. So this GB8 is so strong, it's so free, it's so good. And for the last of the strides, we play the one Sabreeze because Night Rose really, really needs Sabreeze. Nothing else there to say except you really need Sabreeze. Alright, on to the last bit of the G zone. We have G Guardians, so we play one. Uh, Blue Dragon, Eclipse Corpse, Dragon, Deep Corpse, Dragon, Deep, whatever this is called. Typically, the, the, the typical do an effect gets 5k. In this particular case, you just mill and you uh, get 5k. Mill 2, get 5k. Uh, it's pretty good. A lot of people have cut it out for other cards, like say the second copy of another card. But I like having the utility, and plus it's a, f it's a basic shield, so why wouldn't you get rid of it? <clears throat> Next, we play Great Witch Doctor of Banquet's Negro Lily. This is the Denial Griffin or the Hetero Hound or whatever it is of the deck. Um, so, Negro Lily, her ability is kind of just one retired unit on your field. Uh, when this is placed in the Guardian Circle, you may superior call a normal ghost unit, and this unit gets plus 10k. Uh, so, it's 36k shield on her own. And the most important thing about her is that she can have interactions with your field and proc Night Rose's GB2. So the best, the most universal scenario is to have Negro Lazy and then kill off Negro Lazy, call out Bale, then use Night Rose to call Negro Lazy on top of Bale. Bale retired, goes back to deck, kind of bust, counter charge one, and then use Negro Lazy's skill to call Skeleton or a Mick to give your uh, to retire a card on your opponent's side of the field or to give your vanguard 10k. So this I only play one of it because um, after looking at the deck, the turn that you want to use negatively is the turn that is going to determine if you're going to win or lose that game. So I only play one. Plus it's very easy to play around this now so um, if your opponent is unable to play around it the first time or no, if their opponent is able to play around it the first time, they may or may not likely play it around the second time. So there's a reason why I play one. If you want to play two, if you feel like you have to play two, go ahead and give this guy a cut. But otherwise, I play the one. That's me. Uh, next, I play one copy of the Abolished of Tombs, Negro Mode. Simple skill, Soul Blast 1. For every iteration from of five cards in your drop zone, start from 5 to 10 to 15, it gets 5k. And most likely than not, more often than not, you're going to get that plus 15k shield, making her a 30k shield. So she's just very good. You want to have it um, at 1. Next, we play the new Fires Collection, a G Guardian, Diabolist of Solicitation. There we go, I said it better. Uh, Negromona. Her ability is uh, gen uh, Guardian Flip, as I've coined in my vlogs. So you want a Guardian Flip, and you want... Then you get the superior call two cards for your drop zone of different grades and put them to the guardian circle. So essentially you want to bring out Chappy and another card, doesn't matter what the other card is because it's a 5k shield. And then you can use Chappy to mill, drop something down. So this really helps in getting your uh, uh, generation break 8 by your third stride, typically, unless you, yeah, typically your third stride. Uh, so like around there, second, third stride, depending if G guards or not. But uh, Neg Negro Songer or Negro Mona here is very helpful and defensively and for getting all your mills off. And it's also another 30k shield like Mona. Uh, I only play the one because um, you, ca you only really need to flip one thing. More often than not, you're flipping this. So or uh, the last G Guardian, which is Light Elemental Agleam. Um I'm playing Agleam over the new thing because I pay twenty two dollars for this. Come on, guys. Um, Anyways, uh, so yeah, you typically want to flip either this or the other 
or one of, or basically a G guarding you're not using, uh, or can't use, I should say. So, yeah, a gleam, drop, draw, very simple. And that's the deck, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I, uh, to be quite honest, I still am not very good with Night Rose. Even though I built the deck and I have all the cards to build the deck into its, like, most optimum state, I feel... But uh, anyways, that's the deck profile, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Sure, this is someone you think would enjoy it. And as always, my fellow Bangards, um, hit the bell if you want this video location, whatever I upload the video. And stand up to the occasion. And I'll see you all in the next video I make. So until then, peace out, fam.